Well, hello there. Um, I'm on a train. Uh, I've always wanted to say that. I've had to listen to so many other people on the phone saying, I'm on the train. Um, today I'm heading for Irvine. Um, in 1966, Irvine was designated a new town. It was, in fact, the last... New, uh, the last town in Scotland to be designated a new town and I think what this basically meant was that the town could grow and expand and prosper build lots of stuff and somehow thrust itself into uh, the modern age at least that was the idea that like a lot of these kind of schemes and plans it didn't quite work out it wasn't actually completed but enough of uh, the, the plans were completed uh, to have a pretty big impact on the town of Irvine. It, in building these new towns, I think there was five new towns in Scotland. As I say, Irvine was the last. Cumbernauld was one, East Kilbride, um, and one, one or two others. Livingston, I think, was another one. And, you know, it, these places kind of took some of the overspill from Glasgow, because Glasgow was expanding at a heck of a rate. So, you know, that, the, the, building a lot of housing, facilities for business, leisure facilities and all that kind of stuff. And I think the vision for Irvine was very much in a similar vein to Cumbernauld. Uh, and if, if left unchecked, or rather, if, if things had gone the way they had initially hoped they would go as far as the development of Irvine's new town was concerned, it could have looked very much like Cumbernauld. And if you've seen Cumbernauld's town centre, uh, you'll know how bad that would have been. Um, you know, when you arrive in Cumbernauld in a bus, you're immediately in the grim bowels of the structure. It's kind of dim and uninviting and actually a little bit scary. <laughs> So we're going to have a look at Irvine, um, have a look at the impact that what was built of the new town, what impact that has had on the town. And we'll look at old Irvine, which thankfully has largely remained uh, intact. So I'll see you shortly. When you emerge from Irvine railway station, you are faced with a huge car park. Almost as far as the eye can see, and way in the hazy distance are the metal and glass frontages of a shopping centre and supermarket. Not the best welcome in the world. When I arrived in Irvine a few years ago, just to pay the town a visit, it came as something of a shock to find that I couldn't get to the town without having to pass through a huge shopping centre. It annoyed me because I, I don't particularly like shopping centres. I don't like being forced to go a particular way either. Um, I mean, for many people, shopping centres are, are good things and they, they were designed in the... In the 60s and 70s to be good things, controlled environments where you could shop in nice warm conditions with no rain and wind and all that stuff. But I find that once you're inside a lot of these early shopping centres, all the shops are the same, the kind of layout similar and you're hard pushed to know where you are. You, once you're inside a shopping centre, certainly the ones going back to the 60s and 70s, you could be anywhere. You don't know which town or, uh, or city you're actually in, you know, they just look all the same. I can't be doing with that. Um, most towns, I've said this before, but most towns and cities grow and develop in pretty unique ways. They've got a particular layout and character. And once you start fiddling with that by knocking bits of it down and building a shopping centre that looks like a shopping centre anywhere else, then you're destroying that town's character. That's why I don't like shopping centres. Um, and when Irvine started developing its, its new town and putting the, the plans into place, 
in the 1970s. In constructing this thing, they demolished the old bridge over the River Irvin and streets and buildings in this side of that river. I mean, okay, the old town of Irvine is mostly on the other side of the river, and what was destroyed here was a kind of very small part of it. But I think for me it's the bridge that kind of, I find the, the, the most um, upsetting sort of aspect of all this. When you've got a, a town that grows around a river with an old bridge over the river, that is part of that town's character. It kind of in some ways defines what the town's all about. And for them to have demolished that old bridge, I think it dated to the 18th century. The bridge was demolished in the 1970s. To make way for this thing, I think it's a, a, a historical... A, a historical crime, if that's the phrase. How they get away with that, I don't know. And the shopping centre actually doesn't go right over the site of the bridge because if you look at maps, I'll, I'll show you probably shortly, the old bridge actually sits, or used to sit, just at the side of this edge of the shopping centre. Why they demolished it, I don't know. I just, it's just unbelievable. But we don't actually have to go through the shopping centre to get to the old town of Irvine. There's another way. Come with me. The old bridge was a crucial part of Irvine in that it was the only route between the town and the harbour. Most of Irvine was built on the northeastern side of the river growing in the medieval period from a castle in Seagate, and for goods being imported or exported to and from shops and businesses around the High Street, the bridge was the only way to get over the river. You can see the bridge in John Wood's map of 1819. You can also see that while most of the town was on one side of the river, a considerable portion was also built on the harbour side. It is this part of the town, immediately southwest of the river, that was destroyed when they created the new town of Irvine in the 1970s, and which is now the car park, shopping centre and supermarket that greets visitors today. More or less everything between the river and the railway line has gone. This aerial photo dating to 2008 gives you a better view. You can see the bridge in these old photos. One taken from Bridgegate. One from Waterside on the other side of the river. And in this aerial shot dating to 1953. This route into the town passes along the side of the river, then over an iron bridge. It allows you to see just how ugly Irvine's partially built new town actually is. For while the interior of the Rivergate shopping centre might be reasonably pleasant, the outside is without doubt an eyesore, much of it like the backdrop for a post-apocalyptic movie. And inside that shopping centre, they have one plaque removed from that old bridge commemorating improvements to the 18th century bridge in 1889. Initial images of how the new town might look reveal a futuristic vision of street scenes and buildings where you half expect to see a flying car or space vehicle glide into view. Typical architect's drawings where everyone's having fun and reality's out the window. This overhead mock-up of how the whole new town might look 
From Bridgegate House on the High Street and over the railway line towards the harbour shows what looks like a huge skeletal creature resting over the river and the area of Fullerton. If the plans had been completed, everyone might have looked as good as Cumbernauld. In fact, parts of it do. Eventually, we find a narrow lane of Seagate and the 16th century castle and make our way down the high street. It's important to remember that Irvine's not just a golf resort with a new town stitched onto its edge. In the medieval period, Irvine was a royal borough and was for a time the capital of Scotland. Its streets and layout shown in the first edition Ordnance Survey map reveal a well-established town and not one that grew suddenly during the Industrial Revolution. But even in the high street, it's hard to escape that new town carbuncle. That concrete box just behind me is Bridgegate House. It was part of Irvine's new town development designed to link the High Street with the shopping centre. Um, but as I said earlier, um, thankfully that the town plans didn't quite come to fruition and only parts of it were constructed. I think there was designed to be a hotel and uh, another um, thing built, I can't remember what it was, to link Bridgegate with the shopping centre and ultimately the whole thing was going to extend past the railway station down into the harbour. But uh, as I say, this it didn't all happen. And you know, it's, 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 it sticks out like a sore thumb here amongst what is the mostly original uh, high street in, in this kind of area here. And I think this is what you might term, it's not a, a word I use very often, I'm never entirely sure what it means, but I think you could probably apply the word brutalist in, in relation to the architecture um, as far as that <laughs> structure is concerned. What an ugly looking thing. But um, as I say, most of this uh, side of the river has remained intact. Let's just go and have a look at some other little bits that are uh, bits of old Irvine that are still here.
The Rivergate Shopping Centre's Long Mall is now in effect Irvine's High Street. For the actual High Street feels mostly dead and abandoned, at least where shopping is concerned. Well, I'm going to end the video in this area. This is, this is just off uh, Harbour Street, by the kind of Harbour area. Uh, you've got Godfrey's Place and Lent House Venel. Um, and it's just a perfect example of what can be done as far as planning and development is concerned. Where you build housing that is um, absolutely stunning to look at and it blends with its surroundings, it doesn't constantly fight with its surroundings for domination. Um, unlike uh, Bridgegate House in the, the Irvine's uh, High Street, uh, part of the, uh, the the new town development, this uh, area here was, I think, built in the 1990s. And um, yeah, there's a lesson to be learned here. I think the architect for this sort of area um, was an Alan. Stuart. Well done, Alan. An absolutely cracking job. Um, I think it's only fair for me to say here that I, I came through the Rivergate shopping centre on my way here just to see what it was like. Um, obviously, just beside it, there's a, a closed uh, kind of smaller shopping centre a slightly derelict area with all sorts of graffiti and a closed pub and stuff, but the, the Rivergate shopping centre sort of beside that. And inside it's actually all, it's all right, quite nice in fact. I didn't see any leaky roofs or buckets put out to catch drips from a ceiling. Um, all the shops seem to be occupied, I didn't really see um, any, uh, or many, it, I don't think there was any vacant shops. It just had a nice feel to it, you know, and the one main thing about it is that the actual kind of main mall of the shopping centre was long. My goodness, that's a long shopping mall. And I think I've probably already described or talked about it in any number of places in this video. Um, Irvine's new town was... Um, designed to be long when they realised that they could build it in this sort of area going from the high street uh, right down to the harbour it was designed to be a long development I mean the, the Rivergate shopping centre most shopping centres kind of there's branches here and there you know but uh, that's just a, one long mall and actually very nice if I'm honest um, you know, I, I sometimes wonder what planet um, town planners were on in the 1960s and 70s when they come up with a lot of the things they come up with, whether, whether it's Cumbernauld, uh, Shotham Centre, I, I was going to say, or the, the Rivergate Shopping Centre. I mean, the Rivergate Shopping Centre from the outside is ugly. The entrance is fairly nice, but everywhere around is breaking a, it's got all kind of sharp angles, the rectangular stuff going on, you know, irrespective of how nice it'd be inside, uh, uh, sorry, irrespective of how nice it might be inside, I think externally it's, it's a bit of an eyesore, and it, perhaps typical of many of the shopping centres of that period. And I think town planners and architects in the 60s and 70s were just doing their best perhaps to bring us all or, or out of the, a, a kind of bleak post-war period. Um, we, we felt the need to kind of spark some life into society, give us all something to look forward to, maybe even create jobs, build nice housing and give us all the feel-good factor. 
and everybody was kind of thrust kicking and screaming into a modern age, which was felt at the time to be the way forward. And unfortunately, <laughs> in most cases, it just didn't work out like that. Uh, I think Rivergate Shopping Centre internally has stood the test of time, but most of them just haven't, you know. That's just, a, I think, a stark reality here. I'm Eddie Burns. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.